The signs are everywhere. They bombard you every day. I see them everywhere on social media. And in fact, there may be an ad in the middle of this video going on right now. What's the sign? Ads promoting nutritional supplements and probiotics. They're everywhere. And to get my patients confused, about what exactly they are and do you even need them? Well, in today's video, we're going to discuss probiotics. We'll first introduce what exactly is the microbiome because that plays a role in the whole realm of probiotics. We'll discuss what are probiotics. And at the very end of the video, I'm gonna give you five recommendations I have on probiotic foods that you can add to your diet today. Guys, let's talk about poop. Howdy y'all, Dr. Islam here, AKA your poo guru, trying to give you the best tips and tricks so you can live your best life from the top all the way down to the bottom. If you haven't already, don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe so you get more videos like you're watching in today's video. So before we go into the realm of probiotics, I want to introduce what's called the microbiome. So the microbiome is a collection of bacteria yeast and fungi that are residing inside your gut. They're hanging out, they're chilling, they're interacting with the whole entire environment and they're producing substances to help improve your overall health and your gut health as well. And there are so many things that can influence and change the gut microbiome, whether it's stress, the foods that you eat, how you were delivered as a baby, whether you took antibiotics, and if you take supplements like a probiotic. And the whole goal of the microbiome and improving it is to improve all the good bacteria to help them to grow, expand, and do their job to improve your overall health. And one way you can do this is to incorporate probiotics into your everyday diet. So what exactly are probiotics? Probiotics are live bacteria that you introduce into your bodies as a supplement to the guys that are already there. And so it's actually like reinforcements going on inside your GI tract when you add in a probiotic. And these probiotics help with the fight of trying to minimize the inflammation going on inside your body. And so if you are deficient in good bacteria or if you're looking for a way to improve what is already going on in there, adding probiotics is an excellent way to improve your overall gut health and your overall health. Now to be classified as an actual probiotic, there are certain characteristics that this substance must have. Number one, it needs to be isolated from a human. You don't wanna take a probiotic from a pig or a monkey, no way, it's not going to work. So it must be isolated from a human. Number two is that it must survive in the intestine after it's being ingested or eaten. Number three, it has to have some sort of proven benefit. And number four, it's gotta be safe. There's no point in taking something that's going to cause you harm. Now, if you fit within this criteria, this defines what exactly is a probiotic. Now, I'll tell you, in most cases, taking a probiotic doesn't mean you have to take an expensive pill. Cost, in fact, expensive probiotics doesn't at all correlate to the quality or the benefit you're going to get. And for my patients, one of the best things that I recommend is to add probiotic foods to your diet. It's a natural way to add in those good guys to help improve your gut microbiome. It's healthy, it's safe, and you don't have to spend a lot of money to add these foods. In fact, I'll tell you in my opinion, it's a lot better for your overall health to add probiotic foods because not only are you adding the probiotic, we're adding all the other benefits, the fiber, the vitamins, the antioxidants that's naturally in nature. You're not taking a substance that's been manufactured in a lab in a pill that loses all the other benefits that can occur with eating a probiotic food. So what are the probiotics that I recommend to improve your diet? Here are my thoughts. Number one is yogurt. Yes, yogurt is one of the best sources of probiotics. And even though you may be lactose intolerant, guess what? There is good evidence that even if you're lactose intolerant, you can still enjoy yogurt without having that bloating and dissension that can occur with having dairy. And the reason that's the case is that the bacteria in yogurt actually convert lactose into lactic acid. So here's what you wanna look for when it comes to finding a good yogurt. It should be labeled live and active culture. That way you know you have active and live probiotics in that particular yogurt. Number two is kefir. Kefir is fermented probiotic milk. It is made by adding kefir grains to cow's or goat's milk. 
Now, kefir grains are not like cereal grains. They are a culture of lactic acid bacteria that can be added into the milk to help produce a probiotic blend that you can ingest. Number three is sauerkraut. Sauerkraut is finely shredded cabbage that has been fermented by lactic acid bacteria. And sauerkraut is one of the oldest and most popular fermented foods that's around the world. It's been around forever and it's been used in multiple cultures to help improve people's gut microbiomes. Now sauerkraut has a sour and salty taste, but because of that and because of the bacteria that's in there, it can be stored and used for a long period of time. Not only is sauerkraut a great probiotic food, but sauerkraut also has tons of vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, and fiber. And this is why I really recommend having that probiotic food so you can have that blend of that goodness and that material while you're ingesting that probiotic food that you lose whenever you have a probiotic pill. Now make sure you use unpasteurized sauerkraut because pasteurization can kill off that live bacteria. Number four, pickles. Yes, pickles, one of my favorites. Now pickles essentially are cucumbers that have been preserved in a salt or water solution. Now they're left for some time and the naturally occurring bacteria helps produce lactic acid that gives the pickles their taste. Pickled cucumbers are a fantastic source of excellent probiotic material to help improve what's going on inside your GI tract. In addition to that, they're low in calories, high in minerals and nutrients to give you almost a triple bang for your buck whenever you have those pickles. Now, one note to remember is that pickles made with vinegar lose their probiotic benefits. So kind of look at the label and see exactly what those pickles are made of. And number five, traditional buttermilk. Now buttermilk is actually a term that encompasses a range of different types of milks. Now the term buttermilk actually refers to a range of different fermented drinks. Now there's two main types of buttermilks, traditional and cultured. Traditional buttermilk is simply the leftover milk that's produced whenever you make butter. Now only this version has the probiotics that are there. Now this buttermilk is low in fiber, but high in other nutrients and vitamins. This is very different from cultured buttermilk, which is traditionally found in American stores. And that's the one that does not have any good probiotic effect and has a lot of fat to it. Here's my call to action for you. This week, I want you to make a list of what you traditionally eat and see if you have foods in there that are high in probiotics. If not, consider adding one of these five probiotics to your diet to help improve your gut microbiome and give your guys the strength to ward off the bad bacteria. My question today for you, have you tried adding probiotic foods? Have you found a benefit? Has it worked? What hasn't worked? Let me know in the comments down below. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. But I thank you for watching. Don't forget to smash that like button, like, share, and subscribe. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. We get great tips and tricks like you're learning in today's video.